Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about magnesium and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In fact, I'm gonna be talking about five big reasons why you need to make sure that your magnesium levels are sufficient or repleted if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis or really if you have any sort of thyroid problem. And that's because of the big role that magnesium plays in thyroid function and the function of other systems inside of your body which can impact your thyroid. Magnesium is one of the three big nutrients needed to prevent thyroid gland damage inside of the body, which is very important if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Remember, the main reason that people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis have a thyroid problem is because the immune system is attacking and destroying the gland. So if you can reduce inflammation and thyroid gland inflammation or thyroid gland damage, you can actually improve the state of your thyroid. Now, magnesium is one of the big three along with iodine and selenium, and of course, magnesium makes up that third one. Now, those other two are very important, but they're not the topic of discussion today. Instead, we're gonna be talking about magnesium. Now, magnesium plays a role in at least 300 different, or it is used as a cofactor in at least 300 different processes that all occur inside of the body. This is both a good and a bad thing. Good in the sense that magnesium is important, and if you take magnesium, you can impact a lot of systems inside of your body. Bad in the sense that it can be very difficult to diagnose because the symptoms of magnesium deficiency can be all over the place, right? If it's involved in 300 different processes, then those processes can vary all over, the, all over your body, which may result in symptoms such as fatigue, problems with your heart, and everything in between, depression, and so on. And that's very similar, actually, to the thyroid. The reason that a lot of people have problems diagnosing thyroid issues or even things like Hashimoto's thyroiditis is for the same reason, right? The same reason is that um, the thyroid can impact so many different cells inside of your body and your symptoms can be all over the place. So it's really hard to nail down a um, diagnosis of low magnesium, especially since most doctors aren't looking for it. And the symptoms can often mimic those symptoms found in low thyroid function or Hashimoto's thyroid function or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, another thing I want you to be aware of is if you are a patient who has Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you should know that Hashimoto's is incredibly common in people like you, okay? For three big reasons that I'll mention real briefly, and then we'll talk about the benefits of using Hash uh, magnesium um, in just a second. So number one is that diet, the foods that we consume, they're naturally depleted in magnesium due to soil depletion, um, which causes a reduction in how, many, how much nutrients are found inside of the foods that we eat. So that happens with everything. That's not specific to magnesium, but it does impact magnesium. In fact, this, is for the, this also applies to selenium um, and even iodine to some degree, but not to the, not to the same amount as um, selenium um, or magnesium. Number two is that thyroid problems change how your body metabolizes magnesium. Okay, what that means is that it's impacting how much you're excreting, how much you're uh, reabsorbing back into the body, how you're using it inside of your cells. So if you have a thyroid problem, you're already altering what your body is doing with the magnesium once it's inside of the body. And then number three, stress depletes magnesium, right? So um, if you're listening to this, then you're somebody who, uh, the chances are very high, you're, you've been under stress in, recently, or maybe you're even under stress now. Maybe this very video is causing you stress. Sorry if it is, by the way, I hope it is. Um, but I've had people tell me that before. So when you are in stressful situations, it actually depletes more rapidly your magnesium store. And if you're not giving enough magnesium from your diet, you're going to have a hard time keeping balance with what your thyroid needs. Which brings us to the topic we're going to be talking about today, and that would be what are the reasons that you need um, magnesium inside of your body if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So number one, and this is really important, and, and magnesium is required for the production of ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. Now, don't let this confuse you. Um, let me just say that ATP is like the currency uh, of energy for your cells. So your cells need this ATP in order to do things. They need it to do, perform certain functions. And one of these functions is to bring iodine inside of the thyroid gland. So inside of the body, you can think of it kind of like this. So there are certain things that occur naturally because of gradients and other, and other things like that that are happening inside of your body. But imagine this scenario. Imagine we're, we're moving water um, and we're moving it from the top of the mountain down to a stream at the bottom of the mountain. Now, gravity is gonna do the work carrying that water down. We don't need any energy to move it downward, but we do need energy if we wanna bring that water back up. So iodine and certain functions inside of the body are very similar to this. So it's like bringing water up a hill. We have to use the energy to get it up to the top of the mountain. And in this case, it requires energy to get iodine inside of the thyroid gland. That's not something that your body wants to do naturally. Now, if you don't have enough magnesium, then you're not gonna be able to produce enough ATP, which is that energy source to get the iodine inside. So remember, no iodine means no thyroid hormone, which means low thyroid function. So number one, magnesium helps to increase ATP levels, especially in those who are deficient, so that you can get that iodine into your thyroid gland to create thyroid hormone. Number two, magnesium balances the immune system and actually reduces inflammation. 
So we know that uh, decreased magnesium increases inflammation inside of the thyroid gland in patients with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now, what we also know is it's not the magnesium which will, will say trigger the Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but we do know that magnesium deficiency um, will make patients who have or will make inflammation and thyroid gland damage worse in patients with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So we can defer from that or infer from that that magnesium is playing an important role in immune regulation and immune function, which again is the primary cause of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Remember, it is first and foremost an, a disease of the immune system. It is secondarily a disease of the thyroid gland, but that's because of the immune system. So if you can cool down the immune system, you can cool down the damage to the thyroid gland, then you can therefore improve thyroid function in an indirect way. That was number two. Number three is that magnesium impacts thyroid lab tests, including the TSH, as well as free T3 and free T4. So what we have here, we have several studies which have shown what they've done is they've taken patients with Hashimoto's thyroiditis and they have given them magnesium supplements. And then what they do is they say, here, look, we'll check your lab test before and we'll check your lab test after. And the only difference we'll make here is giving you magnesium supplementation. And what happens when they give these patients magnesium supplements is that they see an improvement in their thyroid lab tests after they recheck them. And in fact, this improvement continues for many, many months. Now, it was probably the case that, there's, that these patients were deficient in magnesium for the reasons I mentioned previously, right? It's very common for patients with Hashimoto's thyroiditis to have or suffer from magnesium deficiency or low magnesium levels. So it's probably the case that they were just replacing um, low magnesium levels to begin with, which was improving naturally how well their thyroid function. So there's nothing magical necessarily about magnesium. It's not some super uh, nutrient or super ingredient that helps your thyroid function. But what's probably happening is it's, it's helping produce more ATP. So you're getting more thyroid, uh, so, you get, so you're getting more iodine into the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormone. It's also balancing the immune system to prevent thyroid gland function or thyroid gland destruction. And in, that, in this way, it's improving thyroid function in a natural way. So that's probably what's happening, although we don't actually know. So then number four is that magnesium is needed for glutathione production. Now glutathione is the master antioxidant inside of your body and it's in all over the body actually, but it's predominantly located, or I shouldn't even say predominantly, but there is another important place where it's located is the thyroid gland. Now in the case of Hashimoto's, you probably know that one of the ways that your body um, damages itself inside of the thyroid gland is through the use of free radicals, which can be created when you're producing thyroid hormone. So um, hydrogen peroxide is produced as a result of the production of thyroid hormone inside of your thyroid gland. And what your body normally does is it says, okay, here's this damaging free radical. We're going to take this antioxidant and we're going to negate it or at least get rid of it um, and make it so that it's not damaging the cell. But if you have Hashimoto's, you're producing more of these free radicals than you have antioxidants. And one of the ways that this might occur is because you are deficient in important things like selenium. Uh, remember, that's why selenium is so important, as well as magnesium. So what you can do is if you can take magnesium, you can produce more glutathione, which can neutralize these free radicals and prevent internal destruction of the thyroid gland. And again, that's very important for those with Hashimoto's, but this is also important for pretty much anyone um, with a thyroid gland. If you don't have a thyroid gland, it's less important. Um, it's still important for glutathione production elsewhere, but it's less important for thyroid function because you can help the thyroid gland specifically produce more of this glutathione by replacing low magnesium levels. And then number five, lastly, is magnesium is required for cortisol regulation and metabolism. So we know that people who have low thyroid function have cortisol and adrenal problems, right? Cortisol is just a fancy way of saying you have problems with your stress hormones, and that usually leads to things like fatigue, um, chronic fatigue syndrome, and adrenal um, adrenal related issues. So a lot of people will, will call that adrenal fatigue, right? These are all sort of an umbrella. It's a term to describe all of these terms, which just means you're having problems with cortisol regulation. Now we know that low thyroid function causes cortisol dysregulation, which means you have problems with your cortisol levels if you have a thyroid problem. But we also know that independent of thyroid function, so throw away the thyroid for a minute and just look at magnesium itself. If you have low magnesium levels, you can have similar problems with cortisol and adrenal function as well. Now add on top of the fact that you have both Hashimoto's thyroiditis and now a low magnesium level and you have double the trouble, so to speak, for your adrenal gland. So in treating your adrenal gland is very important. Um, in fact, it can be the root cause of thyroid problems to begin with, by the way. You can have adrenal problems causing your thyroid or vice versa, but oftentimes they, they both go together, so it's hard to distinguish between the two. But what you need to know is that replacing magnesium can improve cortisol function, which actually may indirectly improve thyroid function as well. So do keep an eye on your magnesium level for that purpose. Even though this doesn't directly relate to thyroid function, it's still important because the cortisols, uh, or cortisol and your adrenal health, they are linked to thyroid function. So the question is, what do you do? What do you do if you think you might have magnesium levels? Should you just supplement? Do you need a test for yourself? Do you need to check your magnesium levels? What should you do? 
So my recommendation is, for most people, it's just safe to use uh, magnesium supplements. They're, they're not gonna be harmful. In fact, one of the most common side effects of just taking too much magnesium is that you have loose stools, right? So you have a little bit of diarrhea, or not even diarrhea, but loose stools, um, and because your body is pretty, pretty capable of eliminating any excess magnesium in, that's found inside of the body. Um, either through the kidneys or through your GI tract. So it'd be either be um, you pee it out or in this case you lose it through your stool. So there's really very little downside to using magnesium supplementation. And when you factor in that many Hashimoto's patients and many thyroid patients have low magnesium levels to begin with, it's usually just a good idea to supplement with magnesium. In fact, it's something that I do um, and I don't even have a thyroid problem, okay? I have had uh, adrenal issues in the past, which I've treated naturally, but um, I have a big old bottle of magnesium supplements that I take from time to time because stress depletes it when everyone's under stress. So it's a good idea to replace those, if, especially if you're in a stressful situation. Um, and because your diet is just naturally depleted in, in magnesium, it's a good idea to have it on hand to replace those levels that will eventually be lost over time. But what, do you, what, do, what should you do if you want to test for it? Well, um, I can't remember if I men mentioned this in the beginning, but what's important to know about testing is that the majority of magnesium is found inside of your cells. And we don't really have a good way to stick needles inside of your cells and pull out the information that's found there and to say, hey, do you have enough magnesium inside of your cells? So what we do instead is we, we stick a needle inside of your vein, we pull out the blood and we say, how much magnesium is inside of the blood? Now the problem with magnesium is 1% of your total body magnesium is found in the blood. So when we look at your blood levels of magnesium, it's a pretty poor marker for what's actually happening inside of the cells. We don't actually know. Now what we, what we do and what doctors will do is they'll infer, they'll say, okay, well, if your blood level is low, then there's a good chance that your cellular level is low, but there's no guarantee, right? And those can be discordant, meaning one can be high and one can be low or vice versa. So it's not a great way um, to look at it. Now you can check for serum uh, magnesium, which is one test. Uh, perhaps a better test is RBC magnesium. So if you're someone who really likes to look at the numbers, then you can actually order the RBC magnesium, which is a reflection of how much magnesium is found inside of your red blood cells. Um, so that's a little bit more accurate, but again, it's, it's probably no, nowhere near what's actually reflected or, or what's actually happening inside of the cells all over your body. Looking at your red blood cells doesn't tell you how much magnesium is inside your brain or your thyroid or your heart or you know any other tissue for that matter. So do keep that in mind if you're thinking about ordering lab tests. They can potentially be beneficial. Um, now, if I were to order them, what I'd recommend you do is check a magnesium level at baseline, use your supplementation, and then recheck it. And if you see the numbers going up, well, then that's probably a good sign. Um, again, it doesn't guarantee that you're getting the magnesium where you want it to, to go necessarily, but it is something to look at. In terms of getting magnesium, I'll do another video um, on that topic because it's a, it's a real in-depth video in terms of what type of magnesium you use, what source you get it from, um, what, what things are bound to magnesium because that impacts how well it's absorbed or whether, whether um, it stays in your GI tract or gets to, let's say, your brain or your thyroid gland, et cetera. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what I wanted today to mostly focus on was the benefits and, and why it's so necessary for pe people with Hashimoto's thyroiditis to have enough magnesium in their body. Remember, those are the five important reasons um, and five things that your body and your thyroid gland does with magnesium, which makes it so important. So if you have any questions on magnesium, what it's doing, um, anything related to that, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and that's all I have for you guys today. So otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.